and welcome to the all new, all different number one comics podcast. Bob, it is time for our first annual end of the year episode. Uh, Hopefully it's the first annual. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, it definitely is the first annual, uh, but I, I, I get what you mean. Uh, look, in this episode, Bob, we're going to be talking about some of the uh, our best of. Yep. You know, we have two separate lists going on here of... of things that we kind of mutually agreed on to cover. And then we have like our book of the year, which is mutually decided together. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know. I mean, there's not much more to explain other than that. Uh, no. You guys know how these shows go. Uh, we give our best of, uh, we talk about them a little bit, and then we move on to the next thing. Um, See, I kind of I kind of feel like we should uh, be like the Oscars or something like that, you know, yeah. have actual uh, trophies made up. And then, you know, maybe we could, uh, you know, maybe we could be like the Razzies and have Halle Berry <laughs> on, or she was a good sport for doing that. Oh, she definitely was. I'd love to have Halle Berry over here. <laughs> if she wants to come over, sure, we'll take her. Um, Bob, I just wanted to reflect like a little bit before we got into it. And, and again, it'll be a quick reflection. It won't be a, a whole lot. But, mm. you know, uh, just for, for all you guys listening out there, you know, to recap the year before we go over the awards. uh We've done 51 episodes this year of the episode, or sorry, of the podcast proper uh, with some bonus episodes sprinkled throughout. <clears throat> so that's 51 episodes. We've, uh, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. You know, you really have a podcast you can rely on here. We haven't skipped a single week. No. We've, we've been down in the trenches with you guys every single week, no matter if we were out of town, if we were sick, whatever was going on, if we couldn't meet up together, we still did it somehow. So uh, 51 episodes. We've interviewed some amazing people. Uh, this year, yeah. just in our first year of podcasting, we had uh, Tony Franklin Jr. as our first guest come on from the Crimsters, uh, or sorry, Crim Sisters, and uh, uh, we've had Tyler Crook, one of my absolute heroes on the podcast from yeah. Harrow County, uh, yeah. Manor Black, and the Lonesome Hunster Hunters. Uh, we've had uh, one of mutually our favorite uh, artists that we you know just discovered this year, uh, whose name I would completely butcher uh, from Pop Up. Uh, Matt, Matthew uh, Pear, yeah, I, I can't even come close, but uh, y you know who he is. He's the yes. guy from Pop-Up. Yes. Um, uh, we had John Clark also from Pop-Up yep. on, a really cool uh, creator. Uh, yep. We had Steve Fox. Bob, that was one of my favorite interviews of all time. Um, one of our, actually, it was our most downloaded episode. That was the World Tree episode. We had Steve Fox on as well. Uh, Steve Fox, Fox being of Dark X-Men and All Eight Eyes. Uh, we have Raphael Albuquerque on. Who would have ever thought that we would get Raphael Albuquerque on this little podcast, Bob? That's insane. Um, so Lee of Maleficent, uh, amazing, amazing artist and writer. We've had Lonnie Nadler and Jenna Chaw of The Sickness, uh, one of the coolest books of the year, come on and talk to us. Uh, Ryan Cody of Death Comes for the Toy Maker, Keith Foster of Animals, Austin McKinley of Riot Force, Jake Palermo from The Wire Fence, Danny Harrell of Riot Girls, uh, Jake Takito of Mare Hollow, The Shoemaker, Corinna Becco of The Space Between, Josh Trillio of the of Blue Beetle, Michael Dialinas of Zawa, uh, just, I mean, we've had some amazing people on, Bob, and I can't, you know, just going over that list and thinking about those comics and those creators, I cannot believe that we sat here and talked to them. Really, really cool. Uh, really excited about that. Um, <clears throat> Bob, we've also read some amazing comics this year. Yeah, we uh, have. We've had fun. Um, Bob has cried. We fought each other. We played <laughs> volleyball. We stayed up way past Bob's bedtime. Um, but <laughs> but we did it, and you know we did it for you guys, the listener, and you know also for us because it's fun reading comic books and talking about them. But <laughs> yeah, and and I just, I just want to say uh, for the people who have stuck with us, oh yeah, all these episodes. Thank you for listening to us for 51 episodes. I know it's hard. And <laughs> sometimes we get boring and we're monotonous, but you still listen. So thank you. Yeah, you guys are definitely the real hero out there supporting uh, up and coming comic book podcast. Much appreciated. Uh, Bob and I, like I said, we are having a great time. And thank you guys so much for mm -hmm. sticking it out with us. But now it is time to introduce our 2023 end of the year list. And... 
Bob, uh, as we go over these things, I don't know. I'll just introduce them. We'll let you go first. Um, there you go. Bob, for cover of the year, I'd love to hear what you've got. So my cover of the year is uh, I've, I've got two answers. Mm -hmm. uh, one is just a regular cover A. Okay. And one is a variant cover, which okay. can be, you know, B, C, and cinema cover, mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, you know, website exclusive, anything like that. Sure. So, my uh, cover A, I, you know, at first I was going to, um, at first my cover A, you know, I was going to choose uh, Danny Catch Ghost Rider. Yes. Which definitely, you know, take, harkens back to, you know, 90s Bill Sienkiewicz style cover. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember exactly who did that cover. I don't have it in my notes. But... For my cover A, my choice was Lamentation by Man House. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, cover, I mean, of a great just, book. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, seeing the seeing the uh, small castle, mm -hmm. you know, in the background. Yes. I mean, just the red on the cover, just the blood dripping from the knife. Oh, God. That, that's, the, I mean, I, I just looked at that cover and I'm like, Oh, yeah. There's no other cover I can choose. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, what a wonderful cover. And my variant cover is, I know it's going to be one of your favorites, because she always is. It's the World Tree number one, Jenny Friesen, one in ten incentive cover. Oh, my God, Bob. What an amazing cover. Yes. Uh, yeah, Jenny Friesen, uh, amazing, amazing artist. Uh, wow. Uh, some intense talent behind the pen on that one. So yeah, I I completely second those. Those are some amazing covers. Uh, I'll go into mine really quick then. Um, and and this was every one of these was really really hard to do. And I just mm -hmm. I'm gonna go over what was in like my top, uh, you know, what I was choosing from, and then I'm gonna go into to what my my cover was. But uh, you know, I had to pick from the Last Barbarians number three by Brian uh, ha Haberlin, um, which is. God, such an amazing cover. Uh, Scorched number 16, um, that should just, that, just that title should bring an image to your head. And yes, that's the cover by Mark Spears. Uh, Deadly, Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Man number five by Raza. Uh, Doctor Strange one by Alex Ross. And uh, it, it was those. And then the winner turned out to be uh, Zawa and the Belly of the Beast number one by Michael Dialinas. Uh if, if you guys remember, I can't remember which issue it was. I, I want to say it was the August uh, cover of previews number one. Uh, Zawa was on the cover of that. And we didn't know anything about the book yet. Uh, and it was just on the cover of previews. And I was like, God, what is this amazing, amazing looking cover? What is this? It's so intriguing. The colors pop so hard. And it's just such a nice, uh, pleasant, but gritty style of artwork. Um just one of the most amazing things I've seen all year. Uh, but yeah, mine's mine's going to go, my regular A cover is going to go to Zawa and the Belly of the Beast, number one. Um, if you don't have a copy of that, grab one. It's so good. Uh, for variant covers, you know, I there's so many variants that come out every week. Uh, so many good variants, so many incentives, all of that. I'm actually going to go with a Disney 100 cover because, you know, a lot of those were really important to me this year. Uh, of course, being on the Amazing Spider-Man title. And this one came out this month, actually. So it's very new. Uh, it's the Disney 100 variant cover for Amazing Spider-Man issue 39. And that was the X-Men 1 homage. So with uh, Mickey Cyclops there. Just such a wonderful Can't cover. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, there are so many amazing variant covers to choose from, but I had to go with that. It's a Disney 100. It's an X-Men one. It's got everything all in one there. So so that's what I chose. Uh, Bob, how about your artist of the year? So as far as artists, again, yeah. like like you <laughs> said, with these categories, everything, I mean, everything is hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, of, of, co of course, your list is, you know, you had a harder time just because, you know, you pick up more comics than I do. Mm -hmm. So, so my artist of the year actually 
It came. It came down to. It came down to two people. Mm-hmm. Um, it came down to. Um, so for me, it came down to two people. It came down to Meredith McLaren, you know, of a uh, black cloak of course, and the black cult. Black cloak flame, uh, fame. Yes. Yeah, uh, our first book we covered this year on the yeah, podcast. Exa- exactly. Wow. Yeah. Or uh, Jamal Campbell oh, of yeah, Jamal Superman. Campbell. Yeah, what a wonderful artist. So, I think I'm gonna have to give it to Jamal Campbell. Yeah, I I can see that. Uh, both very very talented, very amazing talented. artist, uh, unique um, and everything. But yeah, I'm. Ooh, that's a tough one, Bob. I don't I don't know if I'd be able to pick one out of those two. <laughs> that's hard. Jo- Jamal Campbell was actually the one who got me you know started on the whole background kick mm-hmm. oh yeah some phenomenal backgrounds there. oh yeah, yeah. jamal campbell oh, yeah doing god's work on superman <laughs> they're really really good stuff uh bob mine was a really hard i i'm kind of in the same camp as you i was i was i can't say that i narrowed it down to two because i wanted to make sure when i made this list i was like these are with the exception of one category, let's make sure these are all things we covered on the podcast. And, you know, lots and lots of books come out. So, you know, unfortunately, we don't always get the very, very best thing that came out that week, you know, done on the podcast, just the nature of the way that we pick the books or whatever. But um, I, I've got a disclaimer. So I'm going to do a disclaimer here. Yeah. And, and it's not a pointed disclaimer. It's because and disclaimer time. <laughs> there you it's go. disclaimer time. Yes. Uh, we got a new song. In the, but um, <laughs> yes, uh, my disclaimer is not pointed at all because the one that won out is an amazing, amazing artist. But I do have to do this, this disclaimer just so you guys know. Um, if we would have actually covered the book The Sickness by uh, written by Lonnie Nadler and illustrated by Jenna Chaw on the podcast, that would have uh, Jenna Chaw would have won hands down, hands down. Right. She would have been right. my artist of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, we only interviewed them and did not cover the book, so I can't uh, legally pick them, <laughs> you know, pick either one of them for anything uh, based on the rules that we're doing. So he's basically saying, "Don't cheat, folks." Yeah, we're not cheating here. We're we're not, uh, you know, we're gonna make sure we do it right. So. Mm-hmm. <sighs> hands down jenna Chaw would have been my choice now my second choice is still a wonderful wonderful artist mm-hmm. uh and it's in a emma kubert so uh yeah emma kubert um doing stoneheart if you guys remember that book that we covered early on in the podcast that illustration just blew me away i was See, just <laughs> i i love that choice uh-huh. my only thing is mm-hmm. That's a weird choice. Oh, it's a I very mean, weird choice. She could, because I mean, you could, you could include her in the writer too. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, you're, you're completely right. Uh, something about her artwork in that book just really, yes, really spoke to me. Really yes. stuck with me. And you know, I might not, you know, I haven't listened to the episode, but uh, I might not have even given it the highest accolades out of anything else that I've given on the podcast. Mm. But just. Going back and really thinking about it and taking the time with it, it was really her art that stood out to me in a way where it was just so unique and it was so well done. And she really just had this whole thing handled and her vision just really, you know, translated very, very well from her mind onto the page that I just have to give it to her. Uh, Emma Cooper, uh, my artist of the year. Uh, Bob, how about your writer of the year? Okay, so my writer of the year came down to three people. Wow. And you just named one of them. Okay. (laughs) So it came down to Colin Bunn. Yes. Oh, God. How can you not include Colin Bunn? Yes. It came came down to Emma Kubert. Yes. And it came down to Kelly Thompson. Oh, God. How? Bob. How do you even no, no. choose out of those that, three? That that <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> did that you flip was, a coin? That was uh, really what did you hard. Do? Man, that is hard. But in the end, I gotta give it to Kel- Kelly Thompson. Yeah, I can't blame you for that one. I mean, she's she's done three three of my favorite books of mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You know, she did Black Cloak. Yep. She did The Call, yes. and she did Birds of Prey. And I mean, that should tell you a lot right there. The call, oh my God, one of my, again, I couldn't pick it for anything because we didn't properly cover it here, but 
Wow, that is a book. Uh, Birds of Prey. Oh my God, uh, an amazing book. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, wow, Kelly Thompson uh, deserves every. But bit I mean, of that. again, that was a very hard choice oh, yeah. because <laughs> all three of those writers mm -hmm. definitely deserved it. Yeah, they all brought their A game. Uh, wow, uh, amazing. Now, Bob, I don't know if mine is going to surprise you or not. Uh, uh, me, just for the you know backstory here. Uh, Bob and I were really stoked to do this because we have actually not discussed our list at all. We agreed on the book of yeah. the year, and that is it. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, all of these are individual. Uh, we haven't gone over them. It's a surprise, whatever. So my writer of the year is actually somebody who wasn't even really on my radar. I knew the name, but uh, until we started the podcast and started covering some of their books... Uh, but once we got into covering some of their books, I mean, it was just, I could not think, I mean, I couldn't stretch and say anything bad about this person's writing. It just blows me away how well thought out and constructed their world building is, how amazing their character development is, how they just are able to transport me to worlds I never thought I wanted to be transported to. But once I was there... I was just all in. It is Kyle Starks. Um, uh, of course, Kyle Starks, <laughs> you know, doing Marvel Unleashed and Where Monsters Lie. I just, Kyle has such a unique voice and perspective and really just blew me away this year. So I, hands down, Kyle Starks. Uh, again, like Bob said, I mean, it was very, very hard to mm -hmm. narrow it down. I'm not going to go into my process or, or who uh, it didn't end up, but Kyle Starks is my number one. <laughs> can't go, can't can't go wrong with that. And oh, like yeah. you said, he wasn't on your radar until At we started all. doing the podcast. Yep. <laughs> Man, and what a phenomenal, phenomenal writer. Oh wow. yeah. I just oh, yeah. I can't get over how good his stuff is. I mean, he made me interested in Marvel Unleashed. Who would have thought? An animal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who fought a demon? Yes. Oh, what a wonderful book. Oh, geez, yeah. Uh, Bob, how about your indie book of the year? Of course, we're going to identify indie here as not part of the big two, right. not a Marvel or DC. Those have individual categories. So just an independently released book. But yeah, we are including Image in there um, and just any other publisher other than Marvel or DC. Right. So my <laughs> indie, I have a 1A, a 1B, and a 1C. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if that's allowed, but it our end of, end of the year it's review, your so I don't care. <laughs> it's your podcast, Bob. Make the rules if you want. So my three-way tie for Indie Book of the Year is Where Monsters Lie, mm -hmm. Black Cloak, mm -hmm. and Stoneheart. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. I, yeah, I could not stop. I could not stop telling people about those books. Oh, yeah. Each one of them. Amazing, amazing books. Wow. Yeah, some some top notch stuff there. Um, so my indie books, and I'll go back to the framing it the way I did it first. Uh, I'll go over how I got there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, look, we read uh, World Tree number one, and we were just flabbergasted. I mean, that book took us both by surprise, and uh, I mean, of course, it was going to be well written. It's James Tynan. Um, it was going to be well illustrated. Had a a team behind it you know it had a a big team behind that book speaking of steve fox yeah exactly uh world tree is in there harriet tubman demon slayer yeah, that came I mean, out of nowhere god that book was so much better than it needed to be uh so good so well written um a haunted girl a book that i really had no expectation for I know whatsoever. I, I, I mean, either. it was just going to be a little uh, independent title, you know, about a girl that sees demons or something. And it turned out to be so much bigger than that. And so good. Uh, and lamentation on top of that. Uh, <laughs> now this is probably the hardest thing I've ever had to choose from uh, based on all of those, because every one of these deserves its own award for being freaking amazing. I have to give it to world tree. Uh, I have to go world tree Again, our number one downloaded episode of the year. Uh, everybody wanted to know what was going on with World Tree yep. when that book came out. You and I included. I read it countless number of times, and I just the mystery just stuck with me. 
And like we talked about in our previous episode, uh, we were so excited for issue number six to drop. World Tree has been such a good book, and that is my indie pick of the you year. You couldn't have gotten wrong with either of them. Exactly. Of yeah, them. every single one of those is oh phenomenal in its own right. Bob, how about your Marvel book of the year? So, my Marvel book of the year, for me, it was an easy, easy choice. <laughs> for me, it was Danny Catch, Ghost Rider, written by Howard Mackey, mm -hmm. with art by Daniel P Picotio. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can't remember how you pronounce it, but yeah, that, like I that. mean, <laughs> you know, in and we said it many times during our review, but I mean, that just trans transports you back to the 90s, Ghost Rider. Oh, yeah, it's such a good book. So well written, so well done. And how, how amazing that you're just able to capture not only like a character and a feel and everything. I mean, it seemed like he jumped in a time machine and wrote that book and got it illustrated. It's just, wow. That was such a feat. Yeah. I mean, the writing is great on it. Yes. The art is outstanding on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, hands down. I mean, that was the only choice for me. Wow. Uh, well, you're going to be interested in mine. Um, I, I went back to the, the way I was doing the, the previous books. This was really hard because it was between Danny Ketch, Ghost Rider Ultimate Invasion, Dark X-Men, and Marvel Unleashed. Uh, those were my top Marvel books this year. Okay. And each one of them, uh, you know, for different reasons. Uh, Dark X-Men's got Steve Fox's just effed up perspective on what's going on with uh, <laughs> the Goblin Queen there and <laughs> the Dark X-Men and just pulling out all the punches and... and just making us so interested in X-Men uh, a way that we never have been. Um, Ultimate Invasion brought us back into the Ultimate Universe in this really, really effed up way there too, you know? I mean, I wish I had the censor beep so I could just say it because, my God, Bob, and it did that great, book it, messed me up. <laughs> and it did a great job bringing us back. It certainly did. I mean, I didn't think I was interested in any more of the Ultimate Universe oh. until I read that book. And, God, I can't wait for what Marvel's got coming up with the Ultimate Universe in, in 2024. Um, like you said, Danny Ketch, Ghost, Ghost Rider, I don't know what else I can say about it. If you, for some reason, left this off your... You know, you left it on the to read pile for later or whatever. No, stop right now. Pause this. Go dig it out and read it. You will definitely thank us. It is such a phenomenal book and it's so well done. And then Marvel Unleashed. I already talked about Kyle Starks. Uh, he's my writer of the year. Um, Marvel Unleashed made me really, really care about these uh, Marvel pets. You know, the, the pet Avengers or whatever and just... Uh, that that's where I have to go. You know, I've got to go back to Kyle Starks and I have to go to Marvel Unleashed because it was such a good Marvel book. And to borrow my own phrase, it was just so much better than it needed to be. Oh, yeah. Like, I just wasn't expecting this and it just really, really did wonders. So uh, my pick is for Marvel Unleashed. Now, Bob, how about your DC pick of the year? Just like in my <laughs> Marvel choice, my DC pick of the year, when I really thought about it, there mm -hmm. was no competition, at least for me. Yes. Uh, my DC book of the year was Unstoppable Unstoppable Doom Patrol, oh, written by Dennis book. Culver, yes. with art by Chris Burnham. I mean, just how, you know, off the wall, mm -hmm. you know, the Doom Patrol and its characters are. Yes. I mean, you have a villain where... You know, you can't beat him unless you say the name of his powers he's using. <laughs> yep. I mean, it, uh, that just says it right there. Yeah, that Doom Patrol book is so much fun. It landed so hard. Uh, I'm so sad that it ended. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm disappointed it was only an eight issue. Yes. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful book. Um, now... Bob, mine was really, really hard for me to pick. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we had Joshua Williams, uh, sorry, Williamson's Superman. Uh, we had Hawk Girl. Mm -hmm. We had uh, Batman and Santa Claus Silent Night, which was <laughs> yeah. actually really phenomenal. Um, there, DC was actually pumping out some stuff this year, and we said mm -hmm. it more times than not on the podcast. Neither one of us huge DC guys. Every single DC book we covered, yeah. we really, really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, so 
does that make us DC guys? Maybe, uh, maybe we're, maybe we were, and we didn't know it, but, um, it's just so, so, uh, hard to choose just one. And they were all so good. I think mine, I don't know if it's a hot take or not, but Bob Hawk girl gets my vote. Um, it was so, so good. Again, I wasn't expecting it to be. I really didn't care. I wasn't invested the slightest bit in the character and the world building that uh, Jadzia Axelrod, you know, was able to do with this character really, really blew me away. The art by uh, Namake, uh, now, sorry, Nawalpin. I can't remember how to pronounce it. Nawalpin. Yeah. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal artwork. Just really, really amazing. Yeah. Um, and, and that has to be my DC pick because I ended up loving this series. And, and, you know, it's just something that I had no intention of even buying. So uh, that is my DC pick. I, I definitely cannot blame you with any of these picks. <laughs> now, Bob, uh, one of our last core categories before we get into our, our pick of the year from the podcast, you know, our mutual pick, uh, is books we didn't cover or book we didn't cover now, this is hard because we didn't cover a lot of books. We can only pick one book a week. Mm -hmm. Eight million books come out every week. There's been eight million weeks this year. So there's a lot of books we didn't cover. Now, to pick just one has got to be really, really hard. It is. Um, so I definitely uh, applaud you for, for picking one there. But um, I'm going to let you go ahead and do it, Bob. So I had a... At first, I had a different pick <laughs> for this category. But my my pick my pick would have been a little bit of a cheat mm -hmm. because the only reason we didn't cover this book is because it didn't come out for two weeks straight, uh, okay. which was Naughty in the Nambo Bus. Uh huh. Because I did end up picking that up. Okay. And I thought it was really good. Wow, um, Bob, I kind of put it on my. I mean, I picked it up too. I sadly kind of put it on my boycott list not really boycotting but i was like look uh, this book isn't meant to be it keeps saying it's coming out mm -hmm. it never did we didn't get to cover it on the podcast so i didn't end up reading it but what you're telling me is i definitely need to dig it out and yeah it. I, I thought it was <laughs> really good wow um bob this one was the hardest category for me now it should have been uh, our our favorite book from the podcast should have been the hardest for me it wasn't this was the hardest book for me. There are so many books that we didn't cover that were so, so great. And I just want to say, maybe this is stretching or cheating a little bit. Uh, so I apologize in advance. It was so hard for me not to pick the coal because I think that that is one of my absolute favorite books of the year. And it is so good. And it is uh, like we talked about, you know, Kelly Thompson being a completely flawless writer. Uh, the art on that even exceeds, uh, or sorry, transcends the writing. You know, it's amazing. Such an amazing piece of art. But the book that I did pick kind of has like a special place in my heart, Bob. Uh, it's it's a really good book. I feel really attached to it. I, I, I mean, I wasn't there at the ground level, but something just... I, I feel so uh, involved. Uh, not involved. Involved's not the right word. I, I feel so... Like, I just know so much about it. Um, mm -hmm. it, it. It came out. It was a wonderful, wonderful book. I really didn't know what it was going to be. And to tell you the truth, it's almost kind of like a romance book, which usually isn't my thing. Uh, it is The Space Between, number one, by Corinna Becco, uh, who I interviewed on the podcast here uh, to talk about the book before it came out. It's a generation ship with, uh, you know, different classes mixing together. And it tale it tells the tale of uh you know these different lovers who aren't supposed to be throughout the ship and it is just i mean when i tell you that this thing is written by an absolute master in writing uh i mean it can't be overstated enough uh it is such a wonderful wonderful comic book that everyone should check out that is the space between number one uh i'm so sad we didn't get to cover it this year and with all that said, Bob, uh, now we get the, the big reveal of the show. Of course, the one book that we mutually agreed on is our favorite book from the podcast, our book of the year. Um, 
you know, stamp that on the back of your trade paperback, uh, book of the year from the all new, all different number one there comics podcast. Uh, Bob, will you please do the honors? So for me, this was, <laughs> there was no other book. Yes. To me. Hands down. Which was the best book that we've covered. Yes. On this podcast. So for me, the number one book. Yes, I know I'm stalling. <laughs> no, please do. The number one book that we've covered on this podcast mm -hmm. by Kyle Starks with art by Peter Kowalski yes. is Where Monsters Lie. God, Bob, what an amazing book. I remember, look, I'm just looking through and I know we have, uh, we usually share pretty close opinions on the books. Um uh, there's times where, you know, I might be into something a little bit more than you are, vice versa, or, or whatever. Sometimes we both really love a book. Sometimes we don't care for a book that much. doesn't happen too often, but every now and again. When I look through our list of books that we've covered this year, in all 51 books, and I look at the beginning of that, you know, we're just starting out, we're covering Black Cloak, we're, we're, we're you know, uh, getting our bearings, uh, all of that. We we get these books and we're I, I don't want to say we're not enthusiastic about them because we definitely are. You know, uh, Black Cloak was great. Um, there was a lot of good books towards the, the beginning, uh, middle and end, uh, you know, throughout this whole podcast. We had lots of books that we enjoyed a lot. But when I look through, I think whenever you get to the Where Monsters Lie episode, we both just lit up with excitement. Oh, I mean, big time. this was just such a mutual like, holy shit. Why is this so good? Why is this written and illustrated and colored and edited so well? What happened? Where did this book come from? And why the hell aren't there, uh, I don't know, like 50 more issues of this to read? Uh, this is definitely our pick of the year, uh, mutually. This book is just so good. Uh, it, it really... Checked all the boxes on everything I wanted in a comic book and everything you wanted. And uh, look, famously, Bob, uh, you're not a huge horror guy. It's not typically your wheelhouse before this podcast. You're more into superhero stuff, uh, less into indie stuff, less into horror. And this, I, I think that, you know, I've seen the evolution. This book single-handedly converted you. It did. Uh, it did. <laughs> you it just, did. you know, every time you see anything remotely close, you're like, could this be the next Where Monsters Lie? You know, and like, you know, like I've said to everybody when I talk about the podcast, before this podcast, outside the big two, I have rarely ever read an image, mm -hmm. rarely ever read a Skybound. Yep. You know, didn't really know what Opus was. Sure. You know, barely knew what Scout was. Yep. But because of books where, where monsters lie, you know, it, it's just, you know, opened me up to, okay, there's something, there's something else besides the big two. And sometimes that something else is leaps and bounds better than the big two and yes. where monsters lie is definitely leaps and bounds better than what the big two have to offer yeah i mean i i couldn't have said it better myself uh this is just a whole world that was just mm -hmm. so pleasant to explore and horrifying and and just all the right ways and just i mean how how this has not already been uh optioned is completely beyond me because uh, no, actually, I don't want it to be because Hollywood would screw this up. I mean, this is perfect on the page. Uh, I, I, I don't know what I want, but I, I do want more of this because it was so good. And let me point out, Bob, uh, a little thing that, you know, we may have both forgotten. Maybe our listeners forgot. This was actually a listener suggestion. It this was. was our first listener mm -hmm. suggestion. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's big kudos to you guys. This probably would have not made it on our list of books to cover if it wasn't for, you know, one of you out there suggesting that we cover it. And you did, and we did, and holy shit, were we very pleasantly surprised. Um, thank you so much for that. Thank you for opening our eyes to uh, Where Monsters Lie. Thank you for... Um, you know, making Kyle Starks my writer of the year. Uh, thank you 
so much for suggesting that book. And I really ask that you guys continue to do that. Anytime you come across something that you want us to cover, you know, throw that suggestion out there because we love hearing suggestions. And as you just heard, uh, uh, your suggestion made it to our book of the year. So uh, not something, you know, not a prideful pick in any way, you know, where Bob can say, I, I wanted to cover that book, or I can say that was a book I was going to suggest. That was pre- purely on you guys. So thank you so much for suggesting that oh, book. Uh, and, th- thank you 1,000% to yeah. <laughs> whoever suggested that book. Exactly. I mean, I, I think it's pretty safe to say our lives are changed for the better for, for reading Where Monsters Like. Maybe the worst. I don't know. But <laughs> but uh, such a wonderful, wonderful book that, you know, uh, fortunately for me and Bob, this year could not be topped. Uh now, um, I, I cannot wait to see what the future brings for Kyle Starks. Uh, hopefully some more like that. But uh, if it's any indication on what he's been doing lately, I think we have absolutely nothing to worry about. So yeah. that wraps us up. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in, checking out our end of the year best of 2023 episode. Uh, you can check us out on the regular uh, podcast, you know, every week. We'll be hitting a book next week, too. So Hope you guys had a wonderful holiday. You have a safe and happy new year. And we'll see you in 2024.